You can't just willy-nilly go out and buy yourself a gear up kit. You may not even need a gear up kit. You might want a gear down kit. So there's things you have to know first. 7,900 RPM and 50 miles an hour. That's pretty good. There's 51. I got the little 50 up to 50 miles an hour at 8,000 RPM. Of course, I want to go faster. My goal is 55. I'm getting a lot of comments saying I need to do a gear up kit. The first problem is all these bikes, 139 QMBs, 50 cc's, they don't all have the same gears in them stock. Mad Dogs, for example. The Gen 1 has a 305 by 30 by 12 inch tire. The Gen 4 has got a 140 by 70 by 12 on the back. That's 11% higher gearing. And there's no way the bikes are that different where one would be at 30 miles an hour while the other one was at 35 miles an hour for the same RPM. The internet's gonna try to convince you. Bike like mine, it's right there. 7090 cc's build, we suggest a 1642. So the 42, 16 tall gear set. I personally don't see how it's possible. That's a 20 six percent increase on the bike that i can't get above 8,000 rpm so i don't know how i'm gonna go faster on this i should be able to go faster on my current gears i have and when you try to read about it so you become smart here's how to calculate your gear ratio so you divide 42 by 16 so there's your 42 divide it by 16 you get 2.65 gear ratio it says this means whatever this means nothing to us we don't know what the final solution is because we don't know what size wheel we have and we don't know what that means at the rear end you got to know what you have in there to know how much to gear up or gear down if you look at the gears for sale there's a whole lot of them and they all say the same thing by the uh, multiplier of the input axle times three you uh, get the ratio of the primary gear divide that by the ratio of the secondary gear multiply that times eight divide it all by six you know it's, it's too confusing doesn't make a damn bit of sense. And then they're talking about primary gears, secondary gears, uh, idler gears. So it's just too confusing. But I'm going to help you make sense of it all. It's not that complicated. There's not that many gears in there. There's actually four gears in this transmission. This is your input shaft. This is what they call the primary drive gears. This is the first one. The primary has two gears. The secondary has two gears. And those make up your final drive. Your final drive is the rear wheel going around. The input shaft on the primary set is always 15. We know that's going to be 15. That's a norm. All the mad dogs are going to share that. The primary gear goes in here and it spins this big gear. And this is the, some people call it the idler gear. There's two together, but think of this gear and that little one on the primary shaft as one set. That's your primary set. This big one and that little one at 15. It goes in there. This can be different on 50 cc's, but 95% of them are supposed to be 52 tooth. So this is this part of the secondary gear system over here, because this spinning around actually drives your axle. If I turn the axle, it turns that. That is connected to my axle directly. This gear and this little gear make up the secondary part of the drive system. And you'll see these drive systems listed with numbers, such as, remember this was a 15 in here. This primary system might say 51 slash 15. Remember the 15 was in here. So that would be a 51 tooth and a 15 tooth. And those two would make up one of the numbers. So you would take 51, divide it by 15, and you would get a number. Same with this one. So you take the big one, divide it by that little one. Let's say it's a 46 and a 18 then you would take 46 divide it by 18 and you're going to get a number that's your secondary ratio if you multiply those two ratios by each other it's going to give you your final output ratio the final output is how many times that back wheel turns for how many times the clutch over here goes around this one just slides right off the shaft here it's not too bad this one is pressed onto the shaft. It'll have a little thrust washer back here. You don't want to lose that. When you buy a gear up kit or a gear down kit, you're going to get this big gear and you're going to get this little gear. You're going to keep this gear. You can't really change that one. That one, that one attaches to your 15 from the clutch input. So if you made this one too big, it wouldn't fit next to the 15. If you made it too small, the gears would miss each other. So we can't change this one but we can change this one as long as we change this one to match it so the gears mesh. On these gears, you'll see this one has little teeth on it, so it goes on your axle, and it meshes with this one, and that one has to be pressed into the gear here, this part of your primary drive. This whole thing is your secondary drive. Get on eBay and we get these GY6 stores sells the uh, NCY ones that are pre-pressed, so you don't have to press out the old one and press on the new one. This is the secondary gear that slides on to your axle shaft. That's your 41. The little one is already pressed on to the primary gear, and that's a 17. So all different sizes, but it may be the way to go. We just have to figure out what size we need. 
Then you also come across this. This is $9. This is a bargain. It's not actually a final drive. It's the idler gear. Remember the final drive slides onto your axle. This gear, that would mesh up with our 15 tooth input from our clutch and it turns this one into a 15. The problem is, is that 15 is not going to mesh up to our secondary big gear. The only problem with the NCY gears is it doesn't tell what the teeth are on this idler gear. It needs to be a 52 so it meshes up with our 15 where the clutch comes in. It says nowhere what size that gear is. It has these two gears, the 4117, so maybe you'll make the assumption that it is a 52 and order that one. Yeah, I'll probably go with this one. No pressing necessary, 8275. It's uh, quite a bit more, but the uh, one that's not pressed is 60 bucks. So, what size do we get? And here's the problem. So I'm currently doing 8,000 RPM and 50 miles an hour. If I gear it up, I might only can do 7,000 RPM. Or I can try to gear it down and get 9,000 RPM, and maybe at 9,000 RPM I'll make enough power, but I'd still be going 50 miles an hour because the gearing's different. So I'd have to go 10,000 RPM to get more speed. It gets pretty confusing on what you want to do. Let's start by making an educated guess of what our gearing is without taking the thing apart. The problem is all these gearings are different. I have a cheat. Nobody wants to sit here with their bike up on a stand, taking all apart, waiting for the parts they ordered to come from China. The whole time your bike is down. So we're gonna break the code on how to tell what gearing you have without taking this apart, or get a pretty damn good estimate. So you know what gears to order. Or you know if you should even order them. On this bike here, I don't think I should be doing a gear mod. I may not do one, or I may do one just to watch it fail, because I'm running 8,000 RPM. I don't think I can gear it up anymore. It's just gonna run lower RPM, make less power. I may have to gear this one down. The assumption is our primary gear set is a 1552. Two divided by 15, that gives us a primary gear ratio of 3.46 to one. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's thirteen to one. Now we know we spun the wheel one time and the clutch spun 13 times. So we have a final drive of 13 to one. 13 clutch spins per one wheel spin are close to it. So it's 13 to one. And we know if we take 3.46 times this same type of number of the secondary drive, we're going to end up with our final drive, the 13.1. Therefore, we should be able to divide 13 to 1. 13 to 1 is just 13. We can divide that by the 3.46. And we now know our secondary drive is 3.75. So now we have to find out what gears make up 3.75. There's some charts on the internet that have a bunch of different gear ratios for gear sets. You can do the math on each of them or you can just look at one of the charts. I'm looking for a 3.75 and I can't find a gear set that does that. I've got one that's close. The closest one I can find is a 5214. So let's go 52 divided by 14 and that gives me a ratio of 3.71 that's pretty darn close so now 3.71 times that's our secondary drive times the primary drive we said before was 3.46 equals 12.85 so that clutch probably really only went around 12.85 times not 13 times for one wheel rotation I can believe that so I'm gonna say that my secondary drive is a 5214 let's go see if I was right all the rear end gears have a little warning in the bottom and they say for expert tuners only the reason is most people that do a rear end gear mod on their bike fail and the bike gets slower if you gear the bike too high it's gonna be slower if you gear the bike too low it's gonna be slower there's only one spot where the horsepower of this bike can reach maximum speed. And that one spot is the correct gearing. And that's what we're gonna try to find. You have to look at a horsepower chart, like these 50 power charts with your mods, without your mods, they're all gonna be pretty close to this. We wanna be at a certain part on that horsepower curve. We wanna be up in the top where it peaks. We wanna be making the most power. So you're gonna have to know two things. You've gotta know what your max RPM is currently. That's gonna let you know if you wanna gear up or gear down, because you wanna to get to about 8,000 8,500 RPM, somewhere in there. You also need to know your current gearing. So since we know this is a 15 going in the input shaft, this has to match up to it. So we know it's gonna be a 52. A 52 is the most common primary big wheel, and that's what it is. The secondary gear 
and the secondary bigger wheel are what we didn't know. These are the unknowns. But since we did the uh, spin test and got 13 to 1, we figured it out perfectly. It's a 52-14. This one's 14, this one's 52. Now, uh, that's for a Generation 1 50cc Mad Dog. But if you have anything else, you can do that wheel test. And if it's a 50cc, you're 52 on the big one, 50 on the small one. So you can take your revolutions on the wheel per clutch movement, figure it out like we did before. And we were accurate, 1452. So we don't have to open our motors up. We can go ahead and order the parts we want and then wait for them to arrive. Again, this gear ratio, 12.85 final drive, is only for this Mad Dog Generation 1 50cc. Your bike's gonna be different. Well, I'm gonna assume that all the gear ratios on the secondary drive portion are different in all the Mad Dog to make up for that tire size difference. I don't know that for a fact, that's an assumption. But we're gonna go on with the Gen 1. We're gonna try to figure out what gear set we need. So if you look at the available gear sets, there's a 42 by 16. That one seems to be really popular. But if I do the math on that one, that's gonna bring me down to four six that's my 52 15 input that's never going to change times the 42 divided by 16 is 2.62 that's going to give me a final drive of 9.0652 that's a difference of 3.77 3.78. So 3.78 divided by 12.85, that's a 29% increase. I don't know if that much of a gear up wouldn't make me slower. It'd probably bog down. It'd be like driving around in seventh gear on a stick shift. So I probably don't want to go that high. I'm not wanting to go lower than 7,000 RPM. I'm keeping my limit between 7,000 RPM and 9,000 RPM. Keep myself in that power band. So to only go down 1,000 RPM, and I'm at 8,000 RPM now, that's only 1,000 RPM. So 1,000 divided by 8,000, I only want to go up 12.5%. That's all I want to increase, and this one's going to give me 29%. I need to find something a lot lower gear than that. So RPM goals are 7,000 to 9,000. Figure out what gearing I need or what my limit is on the reduction for the final drive. 1,000 minus 7,000 was 1,000 RPM. 1,000 divided by 8,000 we just saw, 0.125. So that's 12.5%. I don't want to go beyond 12.5% high currently at 12.85 my final drive times 0.125 equals 1.6 now if i subtract that from 12.85 final drive puts me at an 11.25 final so that would be my maximum gear upness now we have a goal we're setting we can look for gear sets that fall into there on aliexpress here here's a 4917 i saw a glixel 4917 here's a 1650 it's out of stock but let's see if that falls in there d divided by 16 3.125 multiply that times our 3.46 Final drive of 10.81. That's pretty close to the 11.25. That's as low as I can find. 10.81. So that's a good contender for the gear up. I'm not finding anything that would gear this thing down. Here's the Glixel 1749. That in the calculator. 9 divided by 17. 2.88 times 3.46. Puts us at a 9.97 final drive. It's a little bit high for what I was wanting. Let's see what that would put us at though. Just out of curiosity since this one's pretty readily available everywhere finding this glixel 1749 all over ebay but let's see how low it would put my rpm here's how you can figure that out i started with the 12.85 that's what i'm currently at we're going to go to a 9.97 final drive 12.85 minus 9.97 2.88 that's the difference 2.88 divided by 12.85 that's a 22% increase, 0.224. Now I'm at 8,000 RPM right now. 8,000 times 0.224. That's 17.92. So 8,000 minus 1792. That would put me at 6,208 RPM. Hmm. Well, I decided on this gear set right here. It's a uh, 4917. Honestly, it's the least geared up one. I could find. So it's the lowest geared gear upset I could find. That's going to put me at 6,240 RPM at 50 miles an hour mathematically. Hopefully I can make over 6,240 and I can get above 50 miles an hour. That's what the prophecy says. We're going to find out. Well, we got our new gear kit in there. Let's see if our math was right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Should be like what? 9.98. There's 10, pretty close. Yep, about right there would be 
almost 10 so definitely right I'll make two different videos I'll make another one that video will be just simply how to change your rear end gear kit oh, see how we like this mod yeah it feels good down low still it's a little slower on takeoff you can tell right away but that's all right actually the bike feels really good takeoff is real nice there's 47 yeah i don't think it's going to go above 47. oh there's 48. it's taking a while to get there Definitely did not make this bike any faster. It's like a two mile an hour slowdown, which stands to reason. 47 again. Might see 48, might not. But uh, yeah, we definitely lost two or three miles an hour. The run, I got 49 now. I think if I hold it long enough, it may actually catch up with that taller gearing. We'll see. I'm just going to hold it forever. See how fast we can get it. Ah, it's going back down to 48, between 48 and 49. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, there's 48, 49, back and forth. Oh, what a shame. I'm going to stick with the theory that the peak power of this thing is around 8,000 RPM. If the peak power was 6,000 to 7,000, we would have 100% went faster. But we didn't. We went slower. We're not making power where we need to. Now, I did a gear up kit on my 150 and got a 2 mile an hour increase. And I think I might be the only one that's successfully done it that I know. Not, not talking about the forums or the internet, just people I know. Most people that have geared their 150s up have taken that gear set back out and slowed them down. My 150 is making a lot of power. The gear set actually gave me a couple miles an hour. I've got the 171 cylinder kit in it, the uh, Toyota cam, the big valve head, 28 millimeter PWK. So it's making good power, and it's a fairly new bike. And I think the uh, gear up kit helped, but it honestly drove better in the two mile an hour slower mode down low. Now, I will say this about the gear up kit it's not that much slower, you know, two miles an hour, let's say. But it will definitely give you better gas mileage if you're cruising back and forth to work on this thing. Interestingly enough, that gear up kit, guess what brand it was? Glixel. Once again, I've never had a successful outcome with the Glixel product. Now, that's not Glixel's fault. It's just a set of gears. But there you go. Glixel. Made me slower again. Thanks, Glixel.